So today we're gonna to take some text or a logo and we're gonna break it into several parts and then we're gonna make an animation out of it to assemble everything. With that being said, let's get started. Before we get started, I forgot to say that if you did want this specific project file that I'm working on, you could always hit the join button and get that. Here is the little animation that I built for us today. We're gonna to be making something similar. If you wanna do the multiple colors, you can, um, but we're gonna go through on how the core of it is made. All right, so we're just gonna come in and just make a fusion comp. Uh, my project is 30 frames per second. You can make yours whatever it is. This is gonna be five seconds. The animation itself probably isn't gonna be that long, but you might wanna have that title uh, on screen for longer. So uh, what, however long you want it, that's where you're gonna make your uh, comp size. So once we have it on our timeline, go right into Fusion. And this, the majority, whoops. And the majority of this is actually just driven by um, the text tool. So we're just gonna grab our text tool and we'll start with that. And let's go in here and just put in JRTV. We'll have a look there. We'll make it a little bit bigger. Maybe change the font to something we like that we like a little bit more. Actually, there we go. Okay, so we have that. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to uh, be using something to cut everything into those separate little pieces. And this file, if you want it, and you want to follow along, you can go down in the description, it'll direct you to a blog post. And then on that blog post, as long as you're logged in, you should be able to download the uh, files for free. So we're going to come over here, I just have this little lines. And we'll take a look at that. All it is is a bunch of different lines, all different brightnesses. Uh, you have some that are darker, some that are lighter, and we're going to be using the differences there to actually cut all of our little pieces. And we're going to break it into three different parts. If you wanted to, you could break it into even more parts, but we're going to be working with just for three for now because you can make this, you know, really uh, crazy and have, you know, 40 different sets of parts, but we're just going to be doing three. Okay, so. All we're gonna do next is we're just gonna bring in a background just so that when we cut something, we have something behind it. So we're gonna have that background and we're just gonna make this uh, transparent and we're just gonna take our text and we're gonna drop it onto our background. The, so from one out point to the other out point, which will make a merge. And we're just going to make um, three of those because we're gonna be doing three different ranges for the uh, brightness values here. So just copy that. Control C, highlight it, Control C, Control V, Control V. You can paste it there. Also, if you don't know, you can grab this little button here and you'll also get a merge. So I'll just grab two more and we're just gonna connect these up the same way. Just making sure that this background is the yellow, which is the background as you can see down there. And then the green is the foreground, just so that those are above it. So when you look at all of these, bring them up here, you can see them. They all look the same right now. The next thing we need to do is we need to take this media in, which is this here, and we need to cut it up. And to do that, we're going to be using a chroma key here. So all we're gonna do is hit, hold down shift and then hit spacebar. Our select tool comes up and we're just going to type in key. And then in here, we're just gonna to go to chroma key. And then in our chroma key, if we drop down the color range, we have this luminance range, right? So we're gonna break it into three pieces. So our first piece, we're just going to change this to 0.33. So we have it at 0.33. And then we're going to come over to the mat, and then we're gonna invert the mat. And now what we can do, oops, now what we can do is we can connect them. But I wanna make a little bit more space here so we can actually see where all these connections are going. I'm going to, uh, put on a range to grid so that they snap in the grid. And we'll bring this down. So then we can see it a little bit easier. There we go. Okay, so here's our three. And we have our first uh, chroma key here. We're going to take the out of here and go into this merge. So now if we take a look at this first one, now we have it broken up, right? So what this is doing, if we view it over here, this one is just taking all the really dark values and it's making that into a mask. And the primary thing that we wanna make sure of, and the reason why we use this keyer is because we can key it, but we make sure that our alpha values are always one. So when it brings it over here, they're all solid, right? So all we're gonna do now is take this chroma keyer, 
gonna highlight it, control C to copy it and paste it two more times. So now we have it three times and we'll just connect that media up just like that. And then we'll come into each one and change this tonal value. So we could either slide it across or just type them in here. So I'm just gonna put in three, three and six, six. And then in this one, we're just gonna put in six, six and one. So we get that end. And then we're just going to connect these, this one to the middle one, and then this one to the far one. So our first one is here. Our second one is that. So we can see that we're, we're getting little pieces. And then our final one is that. So now that we have all three pieces, we're next going to just take this background. Let's just change the name of this F2 to change the name of it. You don't need to do this, but I'm just gonna put blank just so I know that that's the blank, meaning that there's nothing in here, all these values are zero. I'm just going to highlight that, Control C, Control V to paste that. And now each one of these, we're going to put on top of this background. So I'm just gonna come out of here drop it on there we get another merge out of here onto this merge and then out of here onto this merge so now what we can do is in each one of these so if i view this over here now i i can move it right because if i was to do it over here if i you know viewed this one and i moved it we're not going to be moving everything you see that so that's why we're going into another merge the other thing you could do is you could use a transform, but we're just gonna use a merge because it has all of the tools that we need to uh, continue doing this animation. Because you would have to merge everything back together anyway. So this is probably the better way of doing it. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is now I want to take them from one side of the screen. You could take them from wherever you want. You could have some come from the left, some come from the right, top, whatever. And we're just going to do a little move. And so they all assemble. So I'm just going to go right here and go to frame five and we're on the top one, right? And I'm just going to hit a keyframe there and then let's go to 15 and I'll put a keyframe there as well. I'll click this little button to go back to our previous keyframe, which was at five and then just change this to six. So now if I view it here, all it's going to do is just a little push to the side, but obviously that doesn't look that great because you, you know, you're just moving it, you know, like that. So we're just going to uh, change the opacity. So uh, since we're at five, we'll go back to frame five, right? So it's right here. And you could go to the side of it, but if you make it transparent and then it starts moving, it's gonna look weird. So let's have it uh, as it's moving, it's then uh, losing its transparency. So then it's becoming solid. So we're gonna just go to frame five and we'll come over to the last page here, turn the blending all the way down, hit a keyframe, and let's come over three frames and then turn it on. And so now we'll go into each one of these and do something similar. For this one, we're gonna start this one at, let's do 10 and let's go to frame 20, keyframe that, come back to the first one We'll put in this at six, so it starts over on the side. Come over here, turn this down to zero, one, two, three, using the arrow keys, and then bringing it up. So now if we take a look at these so far, they are starting to, you know, they come on and they start to assemble. Now you see that we have like big chunks right here. So if we take a look at this, whoops, Let's come down to the actual chroma here. Take a look at this, we have a lot here. But there is another value, or there's a couple of different values in here. What you could do is you could add more uh, chroma keys and then just change this range, like make a, a bunch of them equal ranges. So you could do like five of them and then split uh, a one into five different ranges or four of them into different ranges and then you would you would start to break up some of these like colors here because you can see a color a color here we have a color here 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 um and that's why we're getting that big chunk right there okay so coming back into here now we let's go to what was that one that one started at okay so 15 keyframe here 25 keyframe here come back let's change this to six like i said you could make these come from uh, different directions if you wanted to 
but I'm just going to do it this way. Okay, since we're back here at our first frame where it starts its move, we're gonna turn this down to zero, keyframe, one, two, three. And with this as well, the three keyframes, you could make yours more or less depending on, you know, if you're at 24 frames or 25 frames, or if you're at 60 frames, you're gonna to wanna to change these to kind of match, you know, whatever speed that your project's at. So now that we have that, the only thing that we really have to add now is some type of background. So I think what I'm gonna do is just grab in a background and let's make this background red. Sure, take our whole project, drop it on here, and that might look good like that. But I think what I'm gonna do is make this, our text black. There we go, I think that looks pretty cool. So now I have that little, like little bit of an animation um, coming on, but what you'll notice is that it it's moving, but it's it's kind of like, there's no, there's no like easing. It doesn't like slow down right as it gets to the end. So let's add that in. I'm gonna highlight all of these, right? These are the ones with our uh, move, the second set of merges. We're gonna come into our spline and let's push that up. There we go. Get a little bit more room in here. And we're gonna turn on all of these. And if you see more in here than just what you have here, you can come over here and show only selected. So the highlighted ones are the only ones that are gonna be in here. And then I'm gonna click this button and I'm going to turn off the blend because I don't want to affect that. And now I just see the move, right? So I'm going to highlight all of the top ones and I'm just going to hit F, right? So now they're going to go in and it's going to start to slow down as it gets to the end. So if we were to watch this now, they kind of slow down. It's very subtle, but I feel like it adds in because they, they, they're kind of like catching up to the other pieces. And then once they get really close, then they slow down and they, they just move into the pieces. So that's how that works. Now, we're almost done here. All we would need to do is find this media out that we have, that we've been neglecting, and you just connect that up, media out, come over to the edit page, and now we have it on the edit page. And you could just, if you needed to change this to a different title, just come into here, type in whatever you want, and now you have that animation and it's all built upon whatever you have coming into here. And then there you go, you're good as golden. The only other thing you would wanna do is maybe wait for it to cache. Other than that, you're pretty much set to go. Uh, other things that you could do with this is you could use like a logo, like I have a YouTube logo here, you could use something like that. So instead of having the text going into everything, you could have the logo going into everything. Um, other things that you might wanna do is like I have over here, where I have two colors, one going into the other. I can show you this project here quick. Um, this project set up the same exact way. The only thing that is different here is that I have a time speed and all that's doing is it's delaying everything. So all the stuff that comes into this one, this one is just delayed by five, or excuse me, I think it's three frames. So yeah, so I just have the delay set to three frames. So it, everything comes into here, it spits over here, but the stuff that comes into here, it's just delayed by uh, three frames. So it has a slight delay. And then all I did is because it has the delay, I fed that into a background just to change the color of it. So I have like the, the two colors and then I just added everything together. So I have, um, this going here where the one comes into the other one. They're doing the same exact animation. They're just delayed. And if you wanted to make the delay more, you could just come over to here, change this to more. And then obviously the delay is going to, uh, you know, show that it's delayed even more by however many frames you want it to be. I just thought that three was a good number uh, to have like almost like an echo effect um, going into it, but built or set up the same exact way. Um, and that's kind of it. If you wanted to uh, recreate this, I do have that file on my website. All you have to do is just log in and you should have access to that image. Uh, but if you wanted to use something else, you could just get any, any image really that just has texture. All we're really using in this situation is the uh, different levels of brightness within the actual image itself. So just all these different brightness values, that's all we're using 
but this was like kind of the easiest way to go about doing this um, but just to show you some of the give you some ideas of how to do this but yeah that's pretty much it if you guys have any questions about DaVinci Resolve, in the description as well, I have a, a link to my Facebook group. You can ask a question there. If someone in the community knows uh, much information about whatever you're asking, they'll provide you information. But with that being said, my name's JR, and thanks for watching.